talk to today about the corruption caused by greed in our churches. The corruption caused by greed in our churches. And the Lord has, has given me a mission. Everyone has a different mission in Christendom. Hallelujah. Everyone has a mission in Christendom. Some has been given, and that's why the Lord placed in the church gifts. Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, teachers, fivefold ministry, may call it fourfold because pastor teachers may be one ministry in itself. But nevertheless, Everyone is given a word, and within even within those offices, there is certain uniqueness to every individual ministry. I'm not going to be TD Jakes, and as what wonderfully is, he's going to be him. I'm going to be me. We're going to, we're not going to, I'm not going to be everyone to give word of encouragement and exaltation, and that's good. But God sometimes raises up preachers to rebuke and reprove and to bring the church into correction, into, into, into see where the church is going off the rail sometime and give a corrective message to the church. And that's where I think that my ministry is given. And I, and I sometimes preach it. words of exaltation and encouragement to bless the people and to to lift their spirit. But in this in this state of time, and especially here with the Lord, has imparted upon me to speak to the churches and to the nation, the prophet to the nation, as he had called Jeremiah. And so I, I and so I don't take marching orders from we are people, just general general people. I just Get a word, Lord speak, put a word in my in my in my spirit, and I just run with that word and I preach preach that word. And some people may not fully uh, I may not fully embrace it, I may even detest it, but I need to preach the word, to preach the truth, to as the Bible said, to rebuke the charging. He charged me to preach the word, to rebuke, to reprove, and to exhort. And so there's time for exhortation. And a time for rebuke and a time for reproof. The word of God, all scriptures given by inspiration of God for 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 for, for doctrine, and we preach doctrine, but also is given for correction and reproof, so that the man of God, each one of us will may be fully furnished unto good works. So I'm here to talk about greed in our churches. And I'm not just talking about, and it's easy to force to lash out about against mega preachers because they are they are they are they're easy pickings because we see all the the the, the elaborate and the and the, uh, the ostentatiousness of their of their wealth and how they uh, um, um, you know flaunt it in many a times. But, but um, I'm not just talking about even the leaders and pastors. And the, as I said, many people think that oh, every preacher out there is greedy. And, I'm not, uh, and, that, and, that's, and that's far from the truth. However, that doesn't say that you don't have greedy pastors and individual in the church. And as a result of such greed, it brings forth corruption of, of our message and corruption of our mission for the church. It will corrupt our message and our mission because we change the message in order to facilitate us getting more. And we do not uh, uh, go out and do mission because we are too busy seeking more and more and doing things that will benefit us but not benefit the kingdom. And so, and so, and so, we will draw people, yes, to us, but we draw them to fill out our auditorium, 
a colosseum, a, a mega building, but, but few are actually saved for the kingdom. Few are actually converted. Hallelujah. Because our message is tainted. Hallelujah. With covetousness. And which are with a motive that is not based on God's glory. To God's glory and honor. And so we see here now in Revelation chapter 3. And in Revelation chapter 3, 1, um, 2 and 3, chapter 2 and 3, God, Jesus Christ, is in red letter. Red letter mean, denotes in our, most of our Bibles, especially King James Version, that Jesus is speaking. We see red letter even in, in, the, in the Gospels so that we know that Jesus, these are the words of Jesus. We see even in the book of Acts that Jesus would, would speak to Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul in visions and, and that is his, Jesus' statements. Now we see in, in John the Revelator got a word from the Lord. And, 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 and John and John, the apostle John, who outlived all of the apostles. He lived to uh, many scholars say about 80 to 90 years old. Because when God Jesus chose him as this disciple, many say that he was chosen as from as a teenager. He was one of the youngest apostles. And so when when he was exiled, when Rome uh, decided to persecute the church, hallelujah, many of them that was burned to the stake in AD 66, 65, 64. That's when, when Peter and Paul, Paul, what many said, was beheaded by in AD 66. And Peter was crucified upside down uh, in, in, in AD 64. And so we had a great persecution of the church. Many fed to dogs and to lions. And they tried to kill John. And John and they actually cook him and put him in oil, but God, he refused to die. Hallelujah. And, but, and so he, he, he exiled him on the Isle of Patmos. And so God spoke to him even there, even exiled, even in imprisonment. Hallelujah. He was spoken, God spoke to him in a vision. And that's where we have the books, the books of 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, as it was written around AD 80, AD 85, many scholars say, and the book of Revelation. And so we see God giving him, hallelujah, a, 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 a look into the future and also into the churches. Huh? And so you have to see the context in which God has spoken to John. And he wrote to seven church that was scattered abroad in Asia Minor. Hallelujah to the various churches of, of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, the Theotaria. And so and these were specific messages that was done for specific churches. Uh, however, within the, the, the message, he was speaking to the church in general through different ages. Uh, hallelujah. And so, and so when you look at certain books and certain of these letters, uh, you you it, it, it is many scholars believe that okay the first book has to do with what was happening in the earlier in the early the first and second century and then all through the first ages and so when you get to the last of the seven books the book um, the, I mean the churches the last of the seven church of of, of lesser, lesser the, um, the, 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 the same church is talking about the church age of the end time, uh, the church age in which we are now living in, uh, and so Paul now, uh, uh, John now, and Jesus talking to John in uh, Revelation chapter three, Hallelujah, verse fourteen, and he says unto the angel. The word angel there means to the pastor, to the messenger, the leader. Not talking about an angel above. Uh, he's talking about the angel, a messenger, the preacher, the pastor of the church. Uh, hallelujah. We can go into that to show you why, because. In certain scripture, he talks about calling call a preacher an angel. Hallelujah. Because he has a message for the people. And so the and so he says, unto the angel of the church of Laodicean, write these things say the Amen. The Amen. Jesus is the Amen. Hallelujah. Capital A. Meaning that he is he 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 he. he is it? He is the fulfillment of everything. And, and he says the amen, the faithful, and the true witnesses, the beginning of the 
creation of God. And so now we want, I want you to understand, I want to take my time today. Hallelujah. I just want to take my time and to say, and so I, I want to just set that, uh, set up that now. And so, but I want to, we always preach about verse 15, but that's not my focus now. Hallelujah. He says, I know that works and that thou art neither cold nor hot, and I would work spew you, uh, 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 and I would that the work cold or hot. So, so then, because thou art, uh, thou, thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew vomit thee out of my mouth. Hallelujah. And so, he's talking about why is he, Jesus, uh, is accepting of these lukewarm uh, 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 members within this church uh, and even within this age, why people are now lukewarm. And, uh, and, and he says, because. So it's going to tell you why these people and why the church in this Laodicean age, in this end time age, are become lukewarm, that they're neither hot and they're neither cold. They're just in between, and God said, ah, That is unacceptable. I'm going to spew you out. You when when you eat something and it doesn't it doesn't uh, conjure with your with the constituency of your stomach, it, it rejects it and it and it's spewed out. It is vomited out. The body rejects it. And so Jesus knows it. I'm going to spew you out because what you what you're bringing into the body is not is not conducive to me uh, because you're not hot. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, you're not truly a fervent of a fellowship with me. Uh, now you may say, well, uh, well, uh, well uh, you're not even cold. Yeah, uh, yeah you might not really, really hear into me. Uh, very, but but say, you may be just merely religiously warm. Uh, and God said, that is unacceptable. Because why? Because thou says so the church, he's saying, uh, is actually boasting about something. They say within themselves uh, that thou says, I am rich and increased with goods and have, and have need of nothing. No, it's not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So he's saying to this church, and I believe Jesus is saying to the church now in this time, in this day and age, that though you may have some wealth, though you may have accumulate something and have, uh, hallelujah, these mega churches, a mega cathedral, uh, and you have million dollar budget, uh, multi million dollar, uh, one, of, uh, one, of, one, of, one of the biggest church in the United States, their budget, annual budget is 43 million dollars a year, 43 million, uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, 30, 30, 30 million come from within the church ministry, and then 13 comes from, uh, from, uh, from tele, uh, telecast, contribution uh, and that's and that's not true and that and that and that's not rare uh, because many of these ministry are big a um, million dollar on um, cash cows uh, hallelujah and so and so people we have to understand that these church are are and are, 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 are talking about protestant churches now i'm not talking about the church of rome uh, that that has billions of dollars uh, billions of bank accounts and and, and all type of stuff and um, um, and marbles and marble and and and, 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 and cathedral just with great real estate acquisition. I'm talking about the Protestant church who are protest against hallelujah certain things about certain um, um, elaborate stuff within the, within the Catholic church. Um, but they now come out and then they and they is trying to also now make hallelujah hallelujah and uh, um, base their theology on greed. Hallelujah. And so they there. And so this morning I got up and I was listening to one of these telecasters, hallelujah, televangelists. And he says, he says that, hallelujah, uh, uh, he, he can't understand all the Old Testament uh, talks so much about wealth and prosperity because uh, uh, Abraham was rich. Solomon was rich, David was rich, all the, all the patriarch was rich, um, but he has a problem, he says, he has a problem with the New Testament, he didn't say the church, but he has a problem with the New Testament, that they seem to detest 
riches uh, and prosperity. Uh, hallelujah. You talk about a prominent preacher uh, has a problem with the New Testament uh, and their writers, uh, you know, possibly including Jesus, uh, because they don't play the role of money. Uh, hallelujah. And wealth and greed. Uh, and this and, and so he, he's speaking. His speech uh, Adele shows you uh, where the church has moved its focus. Uh, that 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 the purpose of church uh, is to justify now the wealth, uh, hallelujah, of, of these individuals. Uh, and so uh, so because they don't want to pre, they don't want to be condemned or be, or be accused of greed. Uh, they don't preach against uh, even the very Bible that they say that uh, that uh, that they advocate. Uh, that they that, that they want to use the Bible to justify their greed. Uh, and when the Bible don't justify a verse, don't justify it, they try to twist it or do our uh, all out. Hallelujah, hallelujah, uh, have nothing to do with it. Uh, and so here we have in the churches, uh, hallelujah, they have, they, have, they, have, they have many goods, the Bible says. Uh, they are rich and increased with goods, and, and but God, and they said they don't have to need nothing. Uh, but Jesus said, they are wretched and miserable. Wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Yes, that's what, it is. That's what Jesus called the church. He's talking to church. He's not talking to corporate America. He's talking to the church. That the church is miserable, wretched, and poor. Poor in the spirit. Poor in the word of God. You, you, you have wealth and money, but you're poor unto God. Hallelujah, you're poor, you're blind. You know, you don't have a vision. Yeah, you have your plan and multiply. And then I'm going to get this and build this. And But you're blind to the truth. You are naked and exposed. Just like Adam and Eve are naked. Mean that they are, they are not covered by the blood. Hallelujah, naked. They are exposed to the enemy. And so if we see this, we see now, and I tell you about the love of money, hallelujah, in the church. The love of money, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, hallelujah to God. Yes, he says it, starting from verse 6, he talks about about God, godliness with contentment and his great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can't take care of nothing out and having good and having food and raiment let us wear in there there with be content but but they somebody say but they but they that will be rich he says this you know you're not gonna hear it in the mega church and even some of these greedy small churches because these pastors don't want to emulate and get what the other has because they're convicted more. They are coveting hallelujah and it says but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a sneer because the enemy, the enemy used that now to bribe them and for them to corrupt themselves when you are when you're well to rich. I'm not talking about when you have enough to take care of your family. Hallelujah. I'm talking about riches, wealth, dirty rich. As, as David says, God don't make me poor. Because I don't want to, I don't want to be a curse to you. Hallelujah! But don't make me rich neither. Hallelujah! Just give me enough bread and meat to be contented and to bless others and take care of my children and lay up a little inheritance for my grandchildren and others. But to be filthy, dirty, rich. Yes, that's what I mean when I say wilt filthy rich because it brings dirt and snare. Hallelujah! Into her and to fall into temptation and a snare. Not me saying it's the Bible says it, and into many foolish and earthful loss. Because when you have money, I can jet off hallelujah from New York to Paris on my Learjet, and I can and, and, and I can buy any woman that I want. Yeah, because you have the money, there's nothing I can you can I can keep from me. And so and so I I understand. And so yes, you may see Solomon as this preacher. 
preacher said this morning, hallelujah, that go when Solomon was rich and others were rich. So look at what I created, that rich created for Solomon. Solomon was devoted to Christ. Hallelujah, he was, he was so loving. He wanted to build the temple and he built the temple and when you read Chronicles and when you dedicate the temple and you dedicate the temple and you pray the prayer and wonderful words, wonderful shows his devotion. But look at when he got wealth. Hallelujah. When you read in the Proverbs and you read in Ecclesiastic about that wealth. Hallelujah. That wealth allowed him that he could have first 700 wives and 300 concubines. Hallelujah. Women all around. He's used the money. That's all the money. The Bible said no one is going to be as rich as Solomon. But, but yet many people suspect that if, if, if he even was saved. Hallelujah. He might be saved. There's not the high to judge. But hallelujah. And so because of his greed. Hallelujah. And even as his son came out of that greed. His son came in. I want more money. And more taxes. That's what split the, uh, the, the kingdom. Uh, from the southern and the northern. Money. Greed. Hallelujah. So to understand here. That, 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 that when you quote scripture about some uh, riches. Uh, hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Yes that may be so. But where did that rich lead him? It led him to debauchery. Because he said uh, everything that I see. I did not hold which it from me. I gravitate towards it. I got it. I bought it. Because I have all the riches. And the bad. And so that's confirmed the word. That when you're rich. Filled the rich. Into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Which drown. It says drown. They are drowned. They, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Hallelujah. That's what riches and the desire for riches it drawn it overwhelm people and they and when you see that many of the corruption and the fraud and the evil that takes place in this world it is done but not by the little pickpocket at, at, at the corner the massive injustice and the people and the people's home people losing their homes and, and foreclosure it's not because of pickpocket at the corner it's greedy men in the high place that allow thousands of people to lose their homes. Thousands of people, 401k, you go, they're up! But not one in the United States has been prosecuted for the, uh, for the, for the housing crisis. Because greed, hallelujah, hallelujah, these are uh, these predator lenders and, and, and dead swaps and stuff, uh, hallelujah. And because it says here in verse 10, for the love of money, not, not, and people are saying, oh, well, it's not the money is the root of all, it's the love. But why, where do you see that desire to get wealth from? In, in crony capitalism in the United States. And now who have creeped from corporate America and come into the church. It's the love, the desire for wealth and money. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some cov covet after, and he's talking to the church that some preachers and, and lay members are gravitate and need this and need more, more, more covet. But talks about in the in 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 the, in, in, in the Ten Commandments, covet not your wife, uh, not your neighbor's wife. Don't co uh, covet for his ass uh, and his donkey and his cars uh, and all his wealth and his good. And this is what is taking place. People desiring more and more. Not more and more of God, but more and more of wealth and riches. They are greedy. Which, while some in the church covet after, they have earned. They have turned away from the faith. He's talking about church people now. You, because of the greed, the love of money, and the desire for money, they have turned and heard from the faith, piercing themselves through with many sorrows. Because 
because you have to understand the blessing of the Lord make it rich. The blessing of the Lord make it rich and add it no sorrow. So if you get money and greed outside of God, when sorrow comes, it's not from God. That wealth is not from God because when God blesses you, it blesses you to be a blessing. It blesses you that that wealth and money do, does not destroy your marriage. That wealth and my, uh, that that's what the blessing should not destroy or alienate your children. That wealth should not you shall use that wealth to to um, 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 to distort and to kill and to and to plunder. Hallelujah. That wealth is not from God because it brings forth many sorrows. And so we see in our churches this desire for more. This desire that you, we, as many people talk about greed as one of the, uh, um, and the seven deadly sins. Hallelujah. And, 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 we say, uh, and we observe that because of sin, because of greed, because of the love of money, that creates evil. It's the root of all evil. And when you when you look at the people with the money in this world, when you look at the bankers and whoever they are and which whoever ethnicity they represent, hallelujah, the bankers, the, the hedge cup, the hedge fund individual, that no takes from seats in our mega churches, that 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 no some of them are left corporate America and is leading and, and is sitting on the, on, on the boards of many mega churches. Hallelujah. D -d directing his finances and directing his message so that the focus is not about the word of God. It's about how can I be more, how can I find, um, uh, uh, divest and invest this money to, get, to bring forth. Where, uh, I'm not going to build a church where the need is. Don't go and invest in dilapidated um, um, urban area. No, pull out of those urban centers and let's go build our mega church where the dollar people are, where the wealthy affluent people are. Oh, we give them Jesus, but those those black and Hispanic and poor whites, no, we don't have that because they can't pay the level of times and money and offering in our church. So we don't we want to deal with them. So you have the you have the white flight from our city because of greed. The Catholic Church also has pulled out of which was more socially conscious and have schools and, and hospitals. They have moved away from certain inner city of abandoned churches, locked up, whatever, because they because they the money, they they were about money. And because the, 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 the those people come in that area and it's no longer wealthy. They can feed into the coffers of the church. So the mission of the church change. The message of the church change. So they try, so 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 they're preaching and catering to the rich yes. for money. Yes. I'm gonna preach this word. The, your message, and Jesus said, go out in the by with the edges. Jesus sought for the poor and needy and the destitute, the the harlots and whatever. But no, we we say no. We those in a city, those are oh, it's just gangbangers and whores and prostitutes and, and drunkards. We don't we don't minister to them. But that's who the God sent you to minister to. Hallelujah. But no, we want to go to the suburbs where the money class is. Hallelujah. And we're gonna preach a message that's gonna sue them, a prosperity message that says, God wants you to rich. Own all the condos, own all the lear checks, own, own your yacht. God, no, no, love it, love capitalism. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you're not concerned of the church, is not concerned about soul witnesses. And so they don't preach the word because if I offend the homosexual, I'm not going to get homosexual dollars. Hallelujah. If I offend, hallelujah, the greed, the greed in corporate America and these executives that comes 
in a seat on a cross and like, and they won't come back next week. I, will, I can't offend. So I'm going to put a water down that because I want their money. The love of money is the root Amen. of all the evils that you see in the world. Every war that you see started, hallelujah, it's not a war for defense. Nobody coming here and, 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 and amassing their, their, their army along our shore and, and invading our country. No, hallelujah. They go in and say, I want that person's hallelujah oil. I want their sports for oil, spoil. Hallelujah. I want, I want to take their, because the banks just know. Hallelujah. Yes, the money people are to hedge themselves against her because they, 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 they lend these countries. Hallelujah. Talk about the Federal Reserve Systems. Hallelujah. Who takes money? They don't have the money, but they learn that they, they basically take the money and 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 and, and, and in debt the country and allow the country to go into war because because when you have war hallelujah you have to buy equipment you have to mobilize people and so and so as a result it serves uh, uh, to boost the economy of the rich and the connected uh, hallelujah because love of money and so most, most of these wars uh, and these four four Wars, and I'm gonna. I want to go a war against that country, so I'm gonna allow. I'm gonna set up a, a, a covert system in which I'm gonna allow that country to attack us. But if I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna allow some of uh, covert agents uh, to allow uh, to attack us uh, and say the other is that country. Hallelujah. Uh, oh, they are uh, they have a bomb, uh, and we have billions uh, of our own bombs. Uh, but if they have one, I'm gonna go get one. Uh, we need to kill. And I like them. We need to take their oil because we want them to have our central banking system. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. We want these people hallelujah, to be under one world government so we can rule and dominate because war money is power. Money greed. The more I have, the more I can control other people. Hallelujah. It's not about church. Hallelujah. And down the church is brought. Hallelujah, and crazy doctrine that they teach. Hallelujah, and now the protest 
Pentecostal church. They don't go, go so far and play it. But when they tell these preachers, these little, these little nice ladies, oh, I have sitting upon wonderful endowment and prophets. Hallelujah. Just give her into my ministry. Hallelujah. Then you're going to, you're going to be blessed. Hallelujah. God is going to give you this. Hallelujah. God, you don't preach Christ. You don't baptize the poor lady. You don't pay, you don't bring her to salvation. But, but you know her. Hallelujah. You take her the endowment and the money to put into your ministry. Hallelujah. Sleep more preachers. Hallelujah. All over the television. They don't preach anything. Just send me a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars for Hallelujah. Corrupt individual. And yet they have these they, 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 they have checks. And ten thousand dollar square homes. Hallelujah. Corrupting the word. Corrupting the church. And you have good preachers who should be getting the hair time. Hallelujah. And these tell them come. Can't get that hair time. Because these corrupt Hallelujah. A preaching of heard from the faith. And you're preaching to people with itching ears. Hallelujah. That's going to just tell them everything nice and dandy without telling how to truly receive salvation. Hallelujah. And so most of our churches, you don't have the message of the cross. You have motivational speech. Hallelujah. How to get wealthy. How to have a wonderful marriage. And I want you to have a wonderful marriage. Hallelujah. How to live good and have a, and have a blessed life. And in this life. But nothing for the afterlife. No preparation for heaven. They just tell them everything to motivate them. How to look good. How to be nice. How to have good health. And God wish above all that you have. That you live. That you are prosper. Hallelujah. And that you are in health. As your soul prosper it. And so God don't know. No, it's not against your health. And your prosperity. But it's you must do it in him. You must be in Christ. And so here, we're finishing up here. And so we have to understand. And so even, even, even in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, Jesus himself is talking to her. Hallelujah, a group here. Hallelujah. Because someone in verse chapter 15, verse 14, and someone said, the Hallelujah has said unto Jesus, Man, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Verse 13 says, And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he might, that, that he divide the inheritance with me. And so someone came to Jesus talking about inheritance and wealth. And so my father died and left us, left us a, me a mega inheritance. But one would seem here have taken the, 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 the large amount or taken it all. And it's coming to Jesus. I said, God, talk to my brother. He took all my father's wealth as an inheritance to himself. And Jesus said unto him, man, who hath made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. Jesus said, beware of covetousness greed. That's what covetousness means. Beware of greed in your church. Beware of greed in your life. Hallelujah. Yes, beware. Because it's coming upon you. Especially in this mega time. In this mega church era. In this Laodicean church era. When it's all about the money. It's all about the Benjamins. And beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can have all the wealth. Hallelujah. But that's not where life is. Hallelujah. You cannot acquire everything you want. But make sure you have Jesus. Hallelujah. You got your need Jesus. That's why we preach Jesus. Hallelujah. When do you get the blessings? You got to be content. Hallelujah. Don't want no gold. Hallelujah. Don't run no gold. And so that's what he sent back now. As I retreat back. As I come back to an end. Hallelujah. To the ladies in church. Jesus said in, the, in chapter 3. And now he talks when he, when he, when he, when he, when he, when he said that you're naked. He says in verse 18. I come to thee, the ladies in church. I come to thee 
need to buy of me gold. Yes, God is saying, yeah, you're seeking for gold, but get my gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to get gold and silver and precious stones, and you want to put it in a bank or vault in the Panama. You hear about the Panama Papers of these wealthy individual and corporate elite and political that don't want pay taxes. And so they put the gold and the money here. Hallelujah to the really can't reach. And nobody can touch them. They don't want pay. But you and I, the working class people, have to build the roads that they drive their Mercedes based on. But they don't want pay taxes. And the devil is a liar. Greed is the root of all evil. I mean to preach. And so God said, you have your gold stacked up in some vault. And but God said, come, come across ye to buy of me gold tried in fire. God said, hallelujah, lay up your gold and treasures here on earth where moth and, and corruption can get it. Hallelujah. God said, well, lay up into the kingdom of heaven. Try to buy of me gold. Try in fire. That thou mayest be rich. True richness, true riches is from God. The rich life is from God. No rich man have nothing over me. I am Jesus. You have nothing on me. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. I go to bed. I'm well. I'm contented in Christ. No, no. Keep your yacht. Hallelujah. Keep your learjet. Keep all your money away. We want to stock it and hide it. And they're coming for it, though. Hallelujah. The IRS coming for it. Hallelujah. Even in the church. Oh, yes, yes. Your tax free position in the church. I'm in the church. But they use it, hide the money in the church. And they don't hand it. And they, co and they corrupt the system for all the other good people and church because of greedy pastors now. Hallelujah. Making the church a business. And they use your tax free. Hallelujah. Exemption. Because you don't want to have it. No contribute to society. And, but, but they're coming for you. And the tax man coming for you. Hallelujah to God. Because you're corrupting the church. You use the church. Hallelujah. To say, God, Jesus, I have to win the money changers out of the church. You make it a den of thieves. Yes, thieves you are. You're corrupting the work. You want people to pay for their salvation. But the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. I'm coming down. I'm coming down here. And why? Hallelujah. Thou. Yes, counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment. God said, I'm going to give you white raiment. I want to give you my righteousness. Hallelujah. That thou mayest. And that, hallelujah. That thou mayest be clothed because you are naked. God wants to clothe you. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see us because you were blind. Hallelujah. God said, As many as I love in the church, I rebuke, I chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. The church in America, and I close the book, I'm finishing. The church in America needs to repent. Needs to change their attitude and their doing. I didn't say, in the Bible says, be zealous and repent. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not, I'm not talking about sexual sins now. I'm talking about the sin of greed. And that I've, I've contaminated the pulpit and the pew. And everybody wants to drive Bentley and Benz. But nobody wants baptism. Everybody wants riches and nobody wants the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring corporate America into the church. The church should, should be in corporate America. Bringing a revival. Changing hearts and minds. Go, we should go and preach the gospel teaching all nations into all countries, into, into the world's corporate. And, and, and changing the world is of the world changing the church and corrupting the church. Hallelujah. The corruption of greed in our churches. Hallelujah. 
And we have to understand that Jesus is saying we have to be watchful. Watch that we don't allow greed to permeate our heart, our attitude and our souls. That our desire must be heaven born. Our desire must see, see the things that set our affection and things above. Not the things beneath that comes from the earth. Because everything that came from the earth, the gold, because it was mined from the earth, the silver, everything, the paper dollar comes from the earth, the trees, is only for the earth. Nothing is going to go up in heaven. And so therefore, everything you work for, for, for the earth, then you and that is going to be in the six foot grave, and you're going to wither, and you're going to be corrupted, and left back here on earth. 